Good afternoon and welcome to this very special service on this Reformation Sunday as we celebrate the affirmation of faith of nine of our 10th graders. Just uh, very quickly before we begin, just because I know these ninth graders or these 10th graders very well, that um, I'm guessing that maybe some of them have forgotten to tell their parents that their parents have to actually say something during the service. So parents, just so you don't stress about it, it is in the bulletin. When we get to that point in the service, we will invite you one at a time. Uh, the confirmation student will stand up. They know what they're doing. And uh, you will present your child. And if you look um, under the right of confirmation and affirmation of baptism, it says we present or I present. And you name your child's name. Or if they forgot to tell you, you can just say name. That's fine, too. Who desires to make public affirmation of his or her baptism? But we do welcome you to this service, and we also welcome those of you that will be joining us who are not able to join, be with us in person today for this very special service. So let us open with a word of prayer. Loving, gracious, and forgiving God, you reach out to us in the waters of our baptism and begin our journey of faith. You walk with us in times in which we are faithful and in times in which we stray away. All that you require of us is that we put our faith in you, that we live the way that you have created us to be. And when we fail, you ask that we come before you with our humility, asking for your forgiveness. All of that, and we know that we receive forgiveness. Lord, today we celebrate we celebrate the nine lives who will stand before you as they say again the words that were said on their behalf at their baptism, as they affirm those words and claim them as their own. Walk with these nine young people as they continue to journey in faith with questions and doubts, with assurances, with struggles, and with things that go well. Help them realize that the faith life is a life that goes on. Today is yet just one part of their journey. May their journey with you bring honor to you and blessings to them. And may you together be the light this world so desperately needs. In your name we pray. Amen. We'll sing together our opening song. And just so you know, we'll go from that first uh, verse right away into the second verse. Uh, so you don't need to worry about that, oh, let the, oh, 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 let it rise there in between. So let us join together in the song selected by our young people, Let It Rise.
Our scripture verses for this afternoon come from the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from the things that are not visible. Well, today we gather to celebrate with these nine young people. They have been a class that have been a lot of fun to be around. So different in so many ways, yet so alike. And it was interesting to read their faith statements. You will all get a snippet of their faith statements today, as each one will come up and share. And it was interesting to listen to them think about how they wanted to celebrate this day. This is a class that had their confirmation years, their servant leadership academy years, disrupted. This was a class that didn't have it go the way their siblings had it go because of everything we had to go through. But yet these nine young people stayed together. These nine young people reflected on their faith. They came with questions, and they embraced the opportunity to hear and the opportunity to share even their doubts. One of the things I get a chance to do before we affirm our faith here is I get a chance to be with the 10th grade um, just to kind of talk. And we had a couple of nights here back in October, earlier this month, to, uh, to do that. And one of the things I reminded them was this. When you write a faith statement, you're not writing something that is definitive. When you write a faith statement, you're writing a journal. It's simply a journal entry. This is how you feel on this date at this time in your life. And your life is going to take many twists and turns. There are going to be times in which you feel very close to God, and there are times in which you're going to feel God to be at a distance. But I reminded them about their faith, their faith that sustains them, their faith that brought them through a time of, of challenge that none of us as adults could ever have dreamt to go through as a young person. That their faith is what's going to sustain them in the days ahead. Having the opportunity to read their faith statements, having the opportunity to see these young people grow in their faith, I have no doubt that these nine young people will be young people of faith and adults of faith. They know that it's okay to question from time to time. They know that God does not get frustrated when we lift up our doubts and our anger in certain situations. They know that sometimes you have to make room inside one's heart in order to receive that grace and love that God freely gives. I look forward to seeing the journey that the nine of you go on. I look forward to seeing you uh, take on new roles and new life in what we do here. But most importantly, I look forward to the blessing that you're going to be, the blessing that you will be to this world because you let your light shine that you do things, not because you have to, but because somewhere deep inside of you, you know this is what I need to do and what I should do. May your faith journey be an incredible one, and may you be richly blessed by the love that God has for you in all aspects of your life. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these young people, one with us in the body of Christ, who are making public affirmation of their baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we, we thank, thank you, you that you have given us. You have called us to yourself 
enlighten us with the gifts of your spirit and nourished us in the community of faith. Uphold us and all your servants in of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. And we will now have families present their young person, beginning with the Quistorfs. this time you get to experience the joy of listening to our young people be the message for this afternoon as they each come up and share their faith statement. We're going to begin with, Iz with Izzy and she starts our faith statements. Hi, my name is Isabel, and for the start of my faith statement, I'm going to be talking about some ways I'd love to change the world by my faith. So some ways I'd like to change the world because of my faith is I'd wish that people looked up to God and all the things that he does for everyone. If I'd like to change the world by my faith is to have more people go to church or to worship him more. I feel our world would be more better with people who believed and put their lives into God's hands. I think overall I'd change the world by if my faith, by my faith, is to let more people worship God. If I could, I would love to, to make a difference in the world. I think the most encouraging way I could is to let more people into the Christian world. I want to make a difference so maybe then people would open up about their faith and to make, make sure they know it's okay to worship the Holy Spirit. I feel like some people think they'll get judged or something along those lines. So I lo I'd, love to I'd love to make a difference in the Christian world. I'd do that so more people are more open about their faith and to know it's okay to open, an, open up about those things. A Bible verse that is special to me is Isaiah 40, 29 through 31. The verse is, he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not, and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. I think this verse helps my faith that knowing how ever weak I am in life, Jesus will forever help me and to make me stronger and more pure. This verse has helped my relationship with God is by 
how he'll always be here for me and push me and let me grow and give, and give me new wings to grow in his faith. That if I'm ever in doubt in his love, he will pick me up and let me soak up in his love and let me fly in faith. This verse has helped me with my relationship with my family by saying that not all of us can be at our 100% and that is okay and to have off days and we are all trying to be our best. I think this verse has helped with my friends is by saying it's okay to fall at times but we get back up and become a better version of ourselves and way better. My faith has always been important to me since fourth grade. My faith changed over a childish thing. I really wanted an iPad for Christmas in fourth grade. I was on the bus thinking of what could help me get an iPad. I came up with the idea of praying, so I sat on the bus praying for an iPad. When Christmas morning came, I was so happy and so surprised. I got an iPad. After that, I started to take my faith a little more seriously. I realized all the things God does for us. It was over a silly thing, but it changed me and how I see my faith. Some people show they're a Christian through their actions through the church. I want to, others to know I'm a Christian through my actions, not just for the church, but in my everyday life. If I'm on the court, I show it through good sportsmanship and my attitude towards my team. When I'm in the classroom, I respect my teachers and classmates. Helping others is a great way of showing you're a Christian, too. Uh, I've gone to feed my starving children for a few years every year, and I'm helping hundreds of children and parents who are starving all around the world. My Bible verse is 1 John verses 1 through 9. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and purify us from all. It's a hard thing to forgive others. Reading this became easier to forgive others, knowing that God forgives us all. However, we all believe God forgives us, but some of us can't accept it. It was hard for me to accept forgiveness, but it's becoming easier. I don't fully accept forgiveness yet, but sometimes it's hard to believe he can forgive all my sins, but I know someday I'll be able to accept his forgiveness. <laughs> Confirmation a big milestone in my life. Not so much as an end as it is a new beginning. It's the start of a new spiritual life. Confirmation has shaped me as I've grown over the years. It all started in seventh grade when I barely understood who Jesus was or what faith was. I was going just because I was told to, but slowly the wheels started turning. I started to understand what faith was and how important it is. Faith has gotten me through all the tough times, and I've been grateful for all the great times faith has given me. I've been praying to God every day now with true faith and emotion. The verse Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6, help me grow with my faith every day. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. This verse helped me trust God more and know that he will always be there for me no matter what. It also helped me give answers for events in my life when, th <clears throat> when things go good or bad or there isn't a logical answer for it, I know God was part of it. It also helped me trust others and love them no matter what. Now I hope to change the world because people are beginning to grow apart. My goal is to be kind enough to someone that they will go on and be kind to another person creating a domino effect until the whole world will love each other. I believe 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, and creator of heaven and earth. It's truly that simple for me. God has always been a big part of my life, whether it was praying at the dinner table, going to church, or going to VBS. He's always been there with me. Although my connection with him probably isn't as strong as I'd like it to be, I definitely notice him every day. I feel like I could have had more fun with my faith if COVID didn't hit. Things after that really changed and affected my views on God and church. God had this disease come to earth and hurt people who didn't deserve it and made churches who worshiped and loved him become closed. So I kept asking myself why he did it and what was the purpose? But then I think it finally hit me. Everyone was so focused on a routine and didn't know the world was changing around us. God wanted to see how much it took for us to realize what was happening in our world. Many things have affected my faith, but sometimes there are just big things like COVID that almost push you to the edge. A Bible verse that has helped me through many tough times is Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Every time I read that verse, I remember that he is going to save me from the hurt I am in and others as well. I've read this verse when people have passed away, when I've not done so well in school, when pets have been sick, and even during sports. Jesus has saved me so many times, and I'm very grateful that I have him in my life. When I was told to write a faith statement, I had no clue what to write about. I was so nervous that I was going to say the wrong things, say too much, or even say not enough. But I know that what my faith means to me now. It means loving God and trusting that he has plans for me. Trust he has a path for me, and even though I haven't found that path through church, maybe he has something bigger for me. I hope he knows how much I trust and believe him. I think being confirmed is more than just graduating from church, but instead it is our beginning in the church, the start of a long path of our love and faith for God. Faith is important to me because it keeps me from getting too high or low. It gets me out of those hard times we all have in life, but also reminds me why life is good and it keeps me humble, which we all need. I think we all know that our world needs a little bit of work, but it's our fault that it is the way it is. And I think that it's because we've started losing faith in it. If we all just love and help each other, no matter the circumstance, we will all be better off in the end. My Bible verse is Roman chapter 8, verse 6. The mind of a sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. I think that this verse has taught me that as long as I believe and trust in the God, everything will be all right and that he has a plan for everyone. Jesus has had a big impact on my life. Let me tell you a little story about my experience with Jesus. One morning, I went outside to spend time with my kittens, and my kittens weren't there. So I called for them, but they didn't come. Well, I called for them again, and they still didn't come. I started to get really sad. I sat there and prayed for them to come back. After a few minutes, I heard the kittens running up the ramp. I was very happy and thankful the kittens were okay. Confirmation to me means I'm confirming my faith and life to God. I am following God's teaching and sharing the word of God with others. I am letting God take care of me and help me through my life. The relationships I have reflect my faith because I am learning how to make true friends. I grew up making friends that weren't always good. They are bad influences and I would start to copy them. I knew that my parents wouldn't be too happy, so I stopped being friends with those people. I think God helped me become a better person. I want to make a difference in our world because there are some people that could use God's guidance to be a better person. I want to make our world a better place where everyone wants to live and feel safe. My favorite Bible verse is, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future, which is Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. This verse helps me know that I have a future and give gives me hope for my future. This verse also has also helped me know that God has a plan for me and he will take care of me throughout my journey. My parents have helped me grow in my faith. They told me that praying will help others in need, the others who are sick or hospitalized. When my grandma died, my parents said that I should pray for my grandma and know that she is in a better place, free from illness. This has helped me know Help me to imagine what my grandma's doing in heaven. We all came up with the idea that she's spending her money on purses. The 
Jesus has had a imp great impact on my life because of his hope, peace, and the example he sets for every person. Every Wednesday, I would get reminded that he is always there for you whenever I went to confirmation classes. Faith is important to me because faith is what helps to get us through, illuminating the pathway in times of darkness, helping to give us strength in times of weakness. Faith is the cornerstone of getting through life. Knowing if people are Christian or not can be hard and different for everybody, but for people to tell if I'm Christian is that I like to help others when I can. I want to make a difference in our world because we were blessed with the chance to live, and if I don't make a difference, it was all for nothing. So I need to help people and leave behind a legacy I can be proud of. A Bible verse that is special to me is 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 34 through 37. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. This verse has helped me grow in my faith because it has showed that no matter what the challenge is, God is always with you and you can succeed no matter what. It has helped my relationship with God because it gives me trust in him and that he is always with me and I can handle anything with him by my side. Finally, my relationship with my friends and family grows by talking to them about God and talking to them about this story. Thank you. When I was little, faith had always been an important part of my life, and it has continued to be so. There have been a few times where I've experienced the Holy Spirit in my life. Funny story, actually. One time I arrived here at church, and I was bummed because my lips were so chapped. I looked all over the car. There was nothing. But as I walked in the church, I felt this sudden urge to check this one pocket in my winter jacket that I never normally use. That's when I found them, two chapsticks in my jacket pocket. As we all know, being a good person or a good neighbor is a very important lesson that is taught various times in the Bible. I credit my parents in raising me to be a good neighbor to strangers, friends, teachers, and sometimes my sisters. All jokes aside, I think having good relationships with the people around you plays a big role in showing your faith. At church, we were asked to choose a Bible verse that sticks out to us. At first, I didn't know where to start. I wanted something personal, and when I read Matthew 6.34, I knew that was the one I would pick. This Bible verse has become pretty important to me. It helped me grow in my faith. Fun fact about me, I worry a lot. Sometimes so much so that I can't sleep because I can't stop thinking. But whenever that happens, now I just think of that verse in my head. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. I feel that sharing a close relationship with God is important. It is important because Jesus has had an impact on my life for forgiving my sins, and he also helps me through the good times and the bad times. Faith is important to me because having a close relationship with God is very important. People know I'm a Christian because I like to help people a lot, and I want to make a difference in the world because I want to be a successful person and I feel like that is why we are here. My Bible verse is Proverbs 3, 5 and it states, trust in the Lord with all your heart and rely on, and not rely on your own insight. That Bible verse is important to me because it helps bring me closer to God.
that show our appreciation to our young people for having the willingness to stand up and share their faith statements with us this afternoon. They did very well, didn't they? Confirmands, I'll invite you to stand. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for you, one with us in the body of Christ, you who are making public affirmation of your baptism. So let us pray together. Merciful God, we thank you that you have made us your own by water and the word and baptism. You have called us to your faith, enlightened us with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished us in the community of faith. Uphold us and all your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. I ask you now to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you affirm the gift of faith? that God gave you at baptism? Do you affirm the scriptures that have taught you the stories of the faith? Do you affirm this Christian community and this cloud of witnesses that surround you today? Do you believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? I invite you to be seated, and we're going to come up three students at a time, and we invite family or here with for the students that if you wish to come up uh, and join the parents and, spa and uh, uh, mentors and others who are gathered by coming and standing behind that student, and when the time comes, we'll ask you to lay hands on the student. So we'll begin with our first three students on our list. And will their families please come and join us? The students, you may kneel. Isabel, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support Isabel and pray for her in her life in Christ? We do. do. And we, we ask, ask God, God to help and guide us. Isaiah 40, 29 through 31. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength and shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Isabel the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving. Give her patience in suffering and bring her to everlasting life. Amen.
Mackenzie, you've made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support Mackenzie and pray for her in her life in Christ? We do, we do and we, we ask, ask God, God to help and guide, and guide us. us. John 1, or 1 John 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Mackenzie the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving. Give her patience in suffering. Bring her an everlasting life. Amen. And Dylan, you have made public pro profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. And people of God, do you promise to support Dylan and pray for him and his life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, Stir up in Dylan the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving. Give him patience and suffering and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. We invite you to stand. And family, you can return to your seats and confirmands return to your spots. And as they go back to their seats, we'll invite our next three forward, Claire and Ethan and Brooke. Students, we invite you to kneel. Claire, you made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God has made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, and to serve all people following the example of Jesus? and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support Claire and pray for her in her life in Christ? We do, we do and, and we, we ask, ask God, God to help and guide us. us. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Psalm 34, 18. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up and clear the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Ethan, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, 
to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and to share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. And people of God, do you promise to support Ethan and pray for him in his new life in Christ? We, we do, do, and, and we, we ask, ask God, God to, to help and guide us. us. Romans 8, 6. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Ethan the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving. Give him patience and suffering and bring him to everlasting life in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God. And I think Amen. I just popped ahead there. Brooke, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant made with you in, the holy, in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, and to serve all people, following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? People of God, do you promise to support Brooke and pray for her in her life in Christ? We, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope, Jeremiah 29, 11. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up and brook the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving. Give her patience in suffering and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. We invite you to stand and go back to your spots. And we'll invite our final three students forward and their families. Maybe they kneel. Owen, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support Owen and pray for him in his life in Christ? We, we do, do, and we, we ask, ask God, God to help and guide, guide us. 1 Samuel 17, 34 through 37. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and whenever a lion or bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it, struck it down, rescuing the lamb. From its mouth, and if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw, strike it down, and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, The Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of the Philistine. So Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up 
in Owen the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving. Give him patience in suffering and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Rhea, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, and to serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support Rhea and pray for her in her life in Christ? We, we do, and, and we ask God, God to help and guide, guide us. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Matthew 6, 34. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Rhea the, name, the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Cole, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. And people of God, do you promise to support Cole and pray for him in his life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in coal the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving. Give him patience in suffering and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. You may return to your seats. Our young people selected songs that meant something to them during their times in Sunday school, and this was one that came up, and when we agreed that this was a song we were going to do, they promised that they were going to stand up <laughs> and turn and face you and help you with the claps and everything that go with this wonderful song, which is absolutely perfect for after you've affirmed your faith. I am a C, so come on up. Newly confirmed, your first role as a newly confirmed member is to be a worship leader. So turn <laughs> and face the congregation, and we sing through this three times. In the C, I am a C-H. I am a C H R I S T.
guys when I said, absolutely, we'll include that song. That sounds wonderful. And they were all like, yeah, all right. <laughs> Our service will continue now as we receive Holy Communion. Long ago, on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant, shed in my blood for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You will be escorted forward for communion. And if you would like to have juice instead, just let us know. Or if you'd like to have a gluten-free wafer, um, let us know. And um, when you're done, you'll go this way and dispose of your cup. Any other things you can think of? Okay, and we have the examples of the conformants first here. So you'll show everybody how to do it, right? So, come to the banquet for all is ready. Come and see that the Lord is good.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, as we begin to prepare ourselves for our closing song, one other idea this young group of young people came up with was to go out with this little light of mine. And as they thought about it, they started to think about how you would appreciate it. So they decided they wanted to light candles and walk out with candles. So you could see their light actually going out into the world. And we thought, what a wonderful idea. It could become a tradition. You never know. So young people, I'm going to invite you to rise, and I invite you to turn to the song, our closing song, This Little Light of Mine. Our young people will be out in the welcome area, and you can greet them following our service. And then once everybody has greeted you, we invite you to come back over to the Christian Life Center where we've got some mini cakes to send back with you and to uh, take some pictures as well, all right? So let us sing our sending song. What's that? I just got Izzy first. Here you go. This little light of mine, gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Go ahead. You can Thank you, Marco. Yep. to me. Thanks be to God.